This video is sponsored by Skillshare. What's up guys? If you're new to this channel, my name is Ryan and I'm the owner of Little King Goods. I hope you're all doing well and taking advantage of this time we have at home. Um, just a quick reminder to turn on those notifications because I do a ton of giveaways and you wouldn't wanna miss out. Stay tuned to find out what I am giving away today. If you are new to the photography world and find taking photos of your products intimidating or hard to do, don't worry, I'm here to help fix that. Today we are going to explore three simple ways to make your product photography stand out from your competition. In today's world of online shopping and e-commerce, it's so important to have great photography to highlight and showcase just how amazing the products you are making really are. Your customer's first impressions are so important. And with attention spans being so short, it's vital to make good, quick first impressions. You might have a great product or even better product than your fellow leather crafter, but if their photography is better than yours, they will most likely make the sale over you every time. So let's up our photography game. Okay, here we go. Tip number one, lighting. Lighting is probably the most important thing that you can use to your advantage. Lighting can create a mood or a feeling that can really capture your viewer's attention. The way you use light can create dramatic or more soft and subtle shadows that will bring out the textures and craftsmanship in your products. One of the best sources of flattering light is a large window. The bigger the light source and the closer it is to your product, the more soft the light will appear. Most, if not all of my photography is done right in front of my big bay window that I have in my dining room and I place my table or background right next to it. One thing to remember is that diffused light is the best. A cloudy day is perfect for shooting next to a big window. If it's a super sunny day, you will get a really harsh and contrasty result, but you might want that harsh dramatic light. It's really up to your preference. On these very harsh sunny days, I use my curtains as a diffuser. The window light plus the curtain acts as a huge soft box, which produces such beautiful soft light. Okay, moving on to tip number two. I find that using a very interesting or textured backdrop helps with creating a certain style or mood for the photo. I use an old chest that has been super beat up and weathered over the years. Items like these can be found anywhere. I was given this old chest from somebody who was throwing it out and it has been my number one go-to background. Another option you might want to explore is using single color poster board or foam core. I have two colors that I typically use. I use a black and a white, depending on how I'm feeling that day and what mood I'm trying to create. I find with a simple background, it really helps to make your leather products pop and draws your customer's eye to the quality craftsmanship of your item. Another way to photograph your product is to just hold it up in front of you and shoot it. Placing yourself far away from a wall or a background while shooting with a large aperture really creates a nice blurry background, which again draws your viewer's eyes to the product without any distractions. It's important to experiment with your camera angles. Depending on how the light hits your object, it will create different outcomes. For example, shooting directly into window light will yield different results as opposed to shooting a flat lay. The way the light interacts with your scene will create different moods or textures. There isn't a hard and fast rule for shooting your products, so do what looks good and keep practicing. Eventually you will know what works well for you and your process will be faster and you'll know exactly how to set up and become more efficient. The beauty about digital cameras is that you have an unlimited amount of photos you can take. It's not uncommon for me to shoot anywhere from 10 to 20 images of the same item. Rotate yourself around the item while taking photos and experiment. This will definitely give you more options when it comes time to edit. So as I was saying, one second guys. Hey, uh, I'm in the middle of shooting a video right now. First off, hi. That was a little rude. Is this important? So what's going on, buddy? The camera is literally recording right now. What is it? Dude, I am so bored. I've exhausted every single streaming series and I just don't know what to do with myself. Oh my gosh. Hey, instead of wasting your time just sitting around doing nothing all day, why don't you check out Skillshare? Skillshare? Seriously? What, you trying to sell me something like everyone else is on the internet? Hey dude, I'm just trying to help you out with your boredom issues. With Skillshare, spontaneous acts of creativity may just help break up the routine of your boring day and get you out of that funk you're in. Skillshare is an online learning community with tons of inspiring classes that just might get your creative juices flowing again. You can explore some new skills, deepen existing passions, or, you know, get lost in creativity. There are dozens of topics covering illustration, videography, design, entrepreneurial skills, the list goes on. I don't know, I think you know me better than anyone. What class would you suggest I take? Hey, remember that time when mom told you you should start making things like t-shirts and hats and other items because you always had the best idea for graphics and designs? Mm, yeah. Well, there's an awesome class called Design Great Stuff, How to Make Merch with Draplin. I think it would be an incredible class for you to check out. 
He's an awesome teacher and makes learning super easy. He's also engaging and funny and keeps things fresh. I mean, yeah, that does sound great and everything, but you know me, I'm kind of strapped for cash at the moment, just like most people are. Well, here's the good news, bro. Skillshare is incredibly affordable. With an annual subscription, it's less than $10 per month. How much do you spend on chips every week? Exactly. And hey, since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 1,000 subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two-month free trial of premium membership. How does that sound? Um, amazing. Anyway, man, I gotta go. Oh, right, your video, Mr. YouTuber. <sighs> All right, talk to you later. Bye. All right, sorry about that, guys. Let's keep going. Okay, this brings us to tip number three editing. Just a quick disclaimer, this won't be an editing tutorial. Maybe sometime in the future I'll go deeper into this, but for now, this is just a quick tip. Let me know in the comments if this is something you'd be interested in though. Editing might seem intimidating or scary. We might not even know how to edit or know what we are trying to accomplish, but don't worry. This process takes time and you will find yourself evolving over time. The edits I made years ago are nowhere near how I would edit today. Be patient with yourself, be kind. You will constantly be learning. One thing to remember is that it's important important not to over edit. I think sometimes we feel like we have to make the photo so different from what we shot straight out of camera that it looks way too stylized and dramatic. The secret of shooting and creating a great photo is to get it as good as possible in camera and then tweak it so that it pops a little bit more when we edit. By adding some contrast or lowering highlights or boosting shadows, we can create subtle changes. We can make a photo look amazing without overdoing it. Additionally, by adding a preset, we can change the way certain colors look or add a stylized look. To be honest, sometimes presets can be super frustrating for beginners because they see other people using them and their photos look incredible. But when they use those exact presets on their own photos, they look terrible. A preset is only a starting point. It's not the final product. Learning how to use presets in your editing process is an art itself. Slapping on a preset to a photo won't make your photo look incredible. It takes time to learn how to use them. Anyway, like I said before, by adding some subtle changes to your photos, we can get the job done. Okay, I know this wasn't super in depth, but by using these three tips and by practicing them, I am positive your photography will look better in no time. I can't stress this enough. Practice, practice, practice. Make mistakes, learn from them, stay curious, stay hungry. If you want to get better, you will. I hope this video helps with your product photography and that you keep trying to better your skills. Take advantage of this time we have at home. Don't let it go to waste. So as mentioned at the beginning of the video, turn those notifications on so you won't miss out on giveaways. Today I will randomly be giving away five downloadable templates. For a chance to win, comment on this video which template you would like and also follow me on Instagram at littlekinggoods and comment on the post with the same picture as this video's thumbnail. I will randomly be picking five winners within a week. All right guys, thanks for watching. I wish you a blessed and safe week and I will see you in the next one. Peace.